Welcome to Smita Mishra session on careers in testing. Identify your superpower. We're glad you could join us today. All right, uh, Smita, over to you. The stage is all yours. Okay. Um, thank you, everyone, for joining me here. And uh, I'm Smita Mishra, and I work for QA Zone Info Systems, and uh, which is a software testing consulting. I'm based out of New Delhi. And uh, besides that, I'm also a sustainability enthusiast. So I also am building a SaaS platform on uh, helping out enterprises to work on their sustainability related risks and opportunities. And prior to uh, starting these businesses, and uh, I was actually working uh, in various organizations as a testing uh, person, professional, uh, starting from software engineer to test engineer to member technical staff to senior member technical staff to project lead, project manager. And all this while when I was growing, it was uh, project lead, bracket testing, pro uh, project manager, bracket testing. Uh, somehow it's dropped. It, it got dropped when I became a program manager, but uh, that's how it went on. And uh, uh, ever since I mean, starting of my career, I've been into testing. And uh, no, I did not... Uh, think of becoming a tester when I started my career in my college. I did not even know there was a job called a tester. And I, I joined in uh, by default. I fell into testing as I, and I'm going to talk about it. And uh, that was in 2001, almost 19 years back. And uh, in these 19 years, I have been into testing throughout. I've, I've been into software testing all my life, almost all my working life. So I'm going to take you through some of my um, uh, thoughts and uh, experiences and insights and originally when we uh, kind of uh, made this uh, uh, abstract and when I had submitted this uh, thought uh, this uh, paper the talk was about uh, we were going to have it live with you all and we were going to have many people around and uh, the idea was that we would uh, also have some people here who would share their insights into their jobs for uh, very popular designations or things that you really like. And we're going to talk more about it as to how we have, I have therefore uh, kind of pivoted a little bit from my original uh, thought because we can't do that live here. But uh, thank you for joining and let's see how it goes. And please keep sharing your questions and your thoughts and uh, we'll see uh, how many uh, I can answer. If I can't, uh, I will come back to you with responses or write people who can respond. So let me share my screen and see if we can. Uh... Okay, so this, uh, as I mentioned, that the original idea was to hear from you what are the uh, career designations or roles you are into and see if you would like to uh, either improve there or you would like to jump onto something new. And if you wanted to, what were your uh, what were your coveted or dream jobs and uh, how we can actually help you uh, do that. And uh, the idea was to have many more people with those designations around to tell you what their day-to-day -day roles were. And also to help you, the second part of it is uh, to help you identify your superpowers so that how you can utilize them or build on them to become somebody that you really want to uh, in terms of your career. Moving on. Uh, uh, how did you start your testing career? Now, uh, while you may put it in chat, and please do, uh, like, like I mentioned, I just fell into testing. And I know of so many people, so many, I think maximum people, they just fell into testing because uh, somehow testing wasn't a career per se when we started testing. I'm sure, I, I don't know, maybe uh, recent years, maybe it's a it's a job that people are looking forward to. Uh, but most people have just either fell into testing or they have come from development. Uh, so sometimes, and, and I, uh, you know, in initial years, testing was not the most preferred job. I don't, again, like I said, that in some places they are, so there are always exceptions. But when I started, uh, people used to look at testing as something that those who cannot do development should go into testing. Uh, so those who cannot program should be into testing. Uh, and it actually happened like that. A lot of people who uh, couldn't perform well in development, they were moved into testing. Uh, that was one thing. And there is a lot of people uh, were into development, but they really liked the business side of it or the user uh, perspectives, or they actually got passionate about solving the issues for customers than really writing programs. Even they moved on from development into testing. Then there were a lot of customer care people I've seen people come into testing 
people who have uh, read user manuals, people who have understood the product, people who have been into the job of explaining it to others, uh, they have come into uh, testing. And then technical writers. Again, technical writers, I wouldn't say they have, uh, I have seen many successful ones, but I've seen many, many, many of them. A few of them have been successful too. Uh, but I do see that that's a trend. Uh, technical writers in development teams, they somehow happen to have a connect or happen to move into testing. And where do these testers go? So this is, uh, I, I talked about where the testers come from and let's see where the testers go. So what happens to those people who don't want to do any more testing or who have moved on from testing? Uh, quite a few of them go to development. So now that's a trend that I see. Uh, people who understand programming, people who understand uh, or are more passionate about the automation side or the programming side of it, they definitely want to some of them uh, want to try development and they move into that. A lot of them develop very uh, in, uh, intensive uh, understanding of the product or the program. Um, and they actually move into product management or program management. And a uh, uh, lot of them move into business analysis again because of their understanding and their perspective and their job role. Uh, their, their role, they kind of have that uh, knack to understand the product and therefore move into business analysis. And then there is others. So we lose testers to entrepreneurship. We lose testers to investors. Uh, we lose testers to becoming a lot of different things, data scientists. We lose testers to a lot of different roles beyond just uh, development, program management, and business analysis. But what happens to those testers who stay? So those testers who are staying here, what happens to them is um, they eventually choose. And here, all the things that you are seeing, firstly, these are not 100%. Uh, these are things that I could think on top of my mind and research it out. Uh, but surely there are more than this. And uh, so this is a disclaimer for all throughout my slides that anything I say, it's not like a 100% thing. It's something which is uh, uh, like a heuristic. It's 80% of the thing. It's the mass uh, thing that I could think of. But there are things which have exceptions. Uh, then, each one of them would have exception. Uh, and these are not designations. Why Things I'm showing you right now here are more like uh, this, uh, the roles, the uh, actual uh, job on hand. People move into uh, specialized testing. People move into security testing, user experience testing, accessibility, performance. Or they pick up mobile testing and then move into IoT, which is software plus hardware. And then uh, more of software, uh, less of hardware testing. And then they move into medical devices or some kind of devices, which is more of hardware and less of software testing. And then they move into purely hardware testing. So uh, doesn't have to be linear uh, progression, but people do move into different kinds of testing. They become uh, technical. There are people who like to do technical testing, which is like unit testing, integration testing, uh, or uh, and the data and how to uh, test particular scenarios, the APIs and the microservices. Those people move into a thorough technical testing line. And then there are uh, testers who have moved on from the waterfall model to the agile model to the DevOps model. And they find their own places there. Uh, they become scrum masters and agile coaches. Uh, or they take more interest in the logs and the operation sites and move into the infrastructure parts. And, and while they're continuing to do their testing part, they do this. Uh, they, they test infrastructure part too. Um, some of them become quality coaches, test coaches, quality advocates. These are, again, roles, not designations. So, uh, And we're going to talk a little bit more about these. So I'm going to move here to the next slide. These are the designations. So interestingly, like I said, that when I started as a software engineer, there was no mention of testing or development there. It was just software engineer. Uh, however, that entire batch of people that we were recruited were for testing. So we all went into testing as software engineers, and which was perfectly okay for us. Um, and then throughout my career, I have uh, made progress with somehow a, a common designations, always having testing as a bracketed one. Uh, but now there are more defined uh, roles and uh, more defined responsibilities for testing people. And again, these are the designations that I could think of mostly. We could have many more. Um, so I'll just move on from this. Yeah. So now when I actually looked at so many designations, I wanted to hear from people as to 
what is it that they really wanted to uh, like there are so many designations so i i just wanted to know what is really core a key to people in testing what is it that is their dream job what is it that they really want to move on to and i sent out a menti uh, meter request to a lot of my friends and if you can see there is this number 55 at the right bottom which is actually the a uh, number of people who responded to this one an equal number of people respond not of equal but we yeah, are roughly about uh, 35 odd people uh, responded to me personally uh, because menti has a um, character limit of 25 characters so they were like why is that a limit i said i don't have that limit that menti has it so they just wrote to me did directly about a lot of their roles but the end of it, at, at the end of it the uh, what i realized was that very rightly test architect was something that most of them wanted to be uh, which which was very rightly shown which is very rightly shown in this word cloud uh, test manager test coach director quality coach all of these words that you can see uh, uh, in uh, bigger fonts are those where they have got most votes if you see uh, in detail if you would have time to look through these uh, while i'm talking through uh, my slide you will also see that somebody here wanted to be an apple an orange and a pear i am serious somebody mentioned that and i'm okay with that so uh, looking at these uh, the idea was that when i do this i will get to know which are the most popular careers which are which are the most popular careers for testers that people want to be here and uh, let's discuss that so the um ideally i would have loved to have somebody here as a test architect or a qa architect who would uh, tell their daily job but since uh, we don't have that here right now i can uh, i'll just uh, talk to you about the roles so i picked up a uh, test architect and the coach and uh, test manager and in my personal conversations i heard a lot about estet so i picked up that but if there is anything that you would like to know more about uh, you can please uh, just write it down in the chat and we will come back and discuss that so or in your q and a if you want to know more about a certain role so um, to let's let's talk about test architect quickly to me um, all the different organizations again will have different definitions the test architect is a person who understands testing at a very in depth level and is responsible for things like say designing the test frameworks for test automation and testing in general or directing and coordinating the implementation of test automation uh, and other tools designing the test environments uh, providing guidance on the selection of uh, the most effective test uh, design techniques or the test tools to be used in a certain situation what should be the technical types of testing so uh, all kinds of designing including uh, designing methods for the creation of test data or coordinating with the release processes all of this is done by a test architect and uh, generally she is the big picture person so she is somebody who understands software development and can and uh, who can also work with developers to ensure that the development uh, uh, is a, a, the test approaches align with the development approaches or the vice versa so both the approaches should align together so she overlooks that and the test architect should be able to understand various project life cycles and uh, these days of course all kind of technologies also whether it is cloud mobile or social and social uh, media all of this they should understand that part too and uh, let me move on to another one which is after test architect i see a um, test coach so test coach is uh, let me Uh, so if any one of you has done mountaineering or um, likes hiking uh, not hiking per se but probably proper mountaineering where you prepare for days and months uh, to go to a summit summit is the top like the, the the peak where you have to reach typically such climbs or such uh, journeys start with the uh, the uphill journey starts with a base camp so you may be coming from all over you all come together at the base camp and from there you go towards the summit the uphill climb starts and the person who's actually uh, so if you look at the test coach's role it's uh, in in these senses it would be to help the testers reach that summit and uh, typically uh, how i look at the summit is a domain oriented quality focused organization so um, 
if somebody is uh, a tester, it's the test coach's uh, role to actually help the tester become a domain oriented and quality focused uh, uh, besides uh, in addition to the automation uh, testing culture that the tester carries, uh, the coach should be able to take them to that summit. So even uh, teams that are writing user stories and acceptance tests often don't realize that they are not yet at the summit. They're forgetting to explore error conditions in depth. Uh, a good test coach spends a lot of time listening and adapting uh, the process to the project and can learn as much from them as they can from the test coach. It's a give and take mutual uh, thing. Uh, mutual learning happens with the coach. Mm -hmm. uh, yes. Sorry to interrupt. Uh, yeah. Slides are okay. Yes, yes, it's, it's because I just want to discuss two, three roles here. Therefore, okay. it's all this fun, and then we'll just move. Okay, just perfect. one more role, and then yeah, we'll we'll move. I'm sorry to. Thank you. Yeah. So, um, sorry guys, this is the one slide. I'm going to uh, talk about a couple of roles here, and then we will move on to the next one. Um, so the test. Coach role is demanding and requires a broad set of skills ranging from the programmer and tester to people's person and agile coach, even salesperson. So there's, there's a lot of it that you do here. It's actually the fundamental part of uh, a test coach is a fundamental part of the domain oriented testing. And uh, their core job is to actually instill into the team a sense of product quality, pride in their code, combined with a particular way of working that results in a system that's more in tune with the business domain and requirements. Uh, let me quickly discuss test manager or is that, uh, what should I discuss? Let me see if the chat says, what is quality coach we just discussed? Uh, and apple, orange, pure, yes, they're neat. Uh, just fell into testing a lot of them. Kinnaresh says I was building neural networks, great. Okay. Yes, so there is no ask for other titles. So I'll just quickly be done with, uh, let's say, the test manager because that role has really changed a lot. And that role, a lot of people say, we don't need test managers anymore. So let me just give a quick clarification on at that end. So the basic role of a test manager from how I see it is to understand the testing effort. I mean, the traditional used to be a list of activities and I'm going to quickly uh, call out a couple of uh, those uh, items and then uh, tell you how it has changed. Traditionally, the test manager was supposed to understand the testing effort by analyzing the requirements of the project. They were supposed to estimate and obtain management support for the time, resources, budget required to perform the testing. Uh, they were supposed to organize the testing kickoff meetings, define the strategy, develop the test plans, identify training requirements, uh, find out, find all those uh, testing team of professionals with appropriate skills and attitude and motivation and uh, somehow arrange the hardware and software requirement, assign tasks to the test team, and then also review their reports, review all their documentation, make sure that all the content and st uh, structure of the testing documents uh, and artifacts is uh, maintained in a standard way. And uh, so there was a lot of these checks and reviews of uh, test cases and the people. And uh, he was also, or she was also the point of, uh, a single point of contact for the management for the team, uh, for the testing team. And uh, she used to raise escalation about the issues about project requirements or any of them. So this was the traditional role and uh, also the single point of contact for the client for testing. However, um, uh, what we have seen is that today, uh, it's not just about uh, ensuring the timely delivery of different testing milestones or tracking and preparing reports of testing activities. Why? Because today in an agile world, in a DevOps world, teams are very self-organized and uh, teams are, uh, it's, it's no more a separate team of testing. You are all part of one team, uh, developers, testers, product owners, all are working towards quality. Uh, it's no more a test manager's responsibility alone and therefore, the uh, test manager's role has uh, evolved a bit. Uh, it's changed from one who used to manage the testing team to one who now enables the test team. Uh, a test manager that works outside of the self-organized teams, uh, she has a critical role in coaching and test uh, the testers to perform better in an agile way of testing. Uh, the test manager has to support 
the purpose of testing and uh, at times transition into the roles of an uh, agile coach and scrum master something we talked about earlier that tester uh, transition into agile coach and scrum master yes they do mostly the test managers take up that role and uh, in agile the test manager would rather be managing the tests than the testers so uh, that's uh, something you might have heard quite often and the focus is uh, not on documentation as much as it is on developing a good strategy. I mean, of course, it, it was always the focus to have a good strategy for testing, but uh, the focus on documentation, maintaining a lot of them and having a proper uh, uh, standardization and all of that, that has lessened. Uh, the test manager needs to have a broad understanding and a deep knowledge of testing to make a fail safe testing strategy. And that's what it is about. So what I'm going to do now is I wanted to talk about SDET, uh, but I'll only do it if uh, we have that request on chat because I want to move uh, forward. So let me quickly take you to the next one. Can you uh, please um, uh, go to Menti and use this code and respond to what is your dream job and roles and designations? I'm going to open up that browser. Um, so this is what people want to be. I again see test architect coming up big. I see SDET coming up bigger. Okay. And um, all right. So pretty much, uh, okay, we'll changing so we'll pretty much uh, stop here and uh, so this is what it looks like so test architect we have discussed technical test manager we've discussed s debt we should quickly talk about uh, the role and we will move further then great thank you for sharing and uh, you can keep sharing it after the conference also it will only help us to uh, understand where all your dreams lie all right, so we're going to go back to our slides. Okay, so we've done this. SDET, I'll quickly then talk about. Um, in layman terms, SDET is a developer who, instead of working in the product development team, works as part of the test team. Uh, in essence, uh, SDETs are responsible not only for writing code, but are required to test the code as well. Um, they are required to continuously write tests and fix. So they write codes, they test codes, and they also fix their codes, their written codes. And uh, their roles and responsibilities are typically based on the agile life cycle model. Um, if I may just list out a few uh, tasks that an estate does uh, usually. So let me think. So they like it's uh, they build robust scalable and high quality test automation solutions for functional regression and performance testing they develop code for quality automation and uh, ensure e uh, extensive unit test coverage of the code uh, they are building customizing and deploying and managing their test environment and test automation frameworks they check for product scalability reliability consistency and performance uh, they participate in design and architectural discussions, and uh, they do some good uh, high-class debugging also, and they prepare test reports. In short, uh, they are, uh, I would say, customer advocates who influence product design by understanding end-user expectations. And uh, while functional and automation testers will always be required, estates are more like an all-rounder that most organizations are looking for. They're supposed to deep dive into the uh, code and examine if it aligns with the overall objectives or not, and the way it interacts with the various components of an application. So that's what is ESTED. Uh, if you want to know more about any particular role, please feel free to put it in our Q&A or chat, and we'll take, it, take them up later. Now, um, yeah, so like I mentioned earlier, that the first half was part about the designations, the roles, and the jobs. The second half is about identifying your superpower and why we need to do this is uh, see if you have a dream job or if you have certain uh, aspirations to do, 
you should uh, and if let's say you already know that x company has this y rule that i want to do and uh, you are already clear on the mapping as to what the y rule requires and you know that you your strengths are there in that space you have some experience built on it i think then uh, this session is not very helpful to you but if you are somebody who is um, uh, looking at the y rule but not sure if you are a good fit there if you are not sure what your skill sets um, with respect to your superpowers are like what is it that you would be doing better than others uh, and uh, how you should uh, take how sh how you should leverage that how you should make the best of it for yourself and your career then maybe i can help you a little bit in understanding that so uh, and that's what your superpower is like to me it's a skill that you are so good at and better than others that it becomes an advantage of yours over others and this could be a naturally acquired gift or built with effort and when i say naturally acquired gift it's not something you're born with it's you something you acquire naturally because of your circumstances and situations that you grow up in um there is a forbes definition for superpower there is an oxford definition for superpower and mostly very i mean not not surprisingly superpowers are mostly mentioned in terms of either the nations Uh, which are superpower or the characters which are uh, who are who can become invisible or who can see through the walls or something to that tune those are considered to be superpowers so we feel that as humans we may never have those kind of superpowers of uh, just seeing through the walls or becoming invisible but uh, let's see uh, what i have here and so this is uh, i i ask a lot of our tester friends that do you believe people should have fun or people have fun i i explored uh because i believe that people should uh, do have superpowers and i would have my own superpowers others have their own and uh so i wanted to hear it from others and if you can see the screen uh, melissa tondi says yes 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 i mean most of them said yes of course there are people who said no and will uh, quickly i'll show you who they were and why because and they have very solid reason for it and their, their logic was just equal um equally strong and which made me think that yes it's you know you may believe in superpowers or not it's just as equal but uh those who believe in superpowers they said that uh, so i asked melissa what's her superpower she says it's she can make decisions lightning fast and i asked jason hawkins and he says curiosity is his uh, superpower i asked mike lyles and he says i'm able to build connections and relate to people well um very similar to what maria kadimo says that i'm good at listening and guiding people in solving problems uh, ashley says her superpower is empathy very similar to what paul grisafi says that he thinks he has empathy uh, he just doesn't always know how to turn that into help and uh, his another superpower is being able to turn complex uh, uh situations or problems into the simpler ones and uh, that is true Uh, similarly uh, there were, so lisa crispin says her superpower is uh, getting the right people uh, to have conversation and uh, sorry to uh, skip this part but uh, yeah the questions i asked them was question 1 do you think people have superpowers question number 2 was what is your superpower if you think yes question 3 was what would uh, you be doing if not testing and you have all kinds of answers here that if they were not testing they would be doing uh, they are already doing management consulting or uh, if they would be writing books they would be educating people they would be working on robots so all kinds of responses are there and the final question that i asked them was what is your next move do you want to continue in testing or do you want to move on to something else so again mixed responses quite a few of them were already working in aspects of testing for example uh, focusing on process engineering for example uh focusing on uh, moving on to development leadership role or uh focusing more on uh, doing something for testing people from outside of the testing world also so a lot of them uh gave some responses to that tune then um of course uh, curtis and james and greg said no there are no superpowers we don't believe in that and uh, they decided not to respond to that uh they were like uh yes uh, there could be but we don't believe in it now the most interesting response i had actually got was from james park and i will tell you why because that's in a single conversation actually uh, made me think of uh, uh, superpower in a little different way than what i was originally thinking and uh, he says that he would be a defense lawyer which 
I think is very, very appropriate uh, to his uh, uh, attitude. So, um, okay, moving on, let me just quickly take you to this. And we'll talk more about superpowers, like what it really is and how you should look at yours. But before that, do you think people have superpowers? And if you do, uh, what are your superpowers? Wow, patience comes first. Thank you for patiently going through the presentation. Finisher, very nice. Troubleshooting, listening, empathy, people skills, mentoring. Okay, time deficiency. Okay. Okay, mind reading. Superb. Listening continues to be the lead finisher. Great. Okay, so we are going to, okay. So let's, uh, let's move on to the slides back. And yes, clearly designing and finisher and listening and empathy, patience, Pledge to complete work, smart work, enthusiasm, improvisation, beautiful. So yes, these are all uh, bonding with people. These are indeed huge superpowers. Uh, and I hope you've all put at least two to three options here because, um, okay. So thank you all for putting in your details and uh, for sharing with me about uh, the superpowers that you believe you have. Uh, I will quickly uh, probably share my perspective. And let me first share uh, uh, this superpowers perspectives in terms of our daily life, and then we'll move on to testing. So what is superpower? Let's say it's a unique ability to do something useful. Unique meaning uh, either absolutely unique, so you are literally the only one who does it, or relatively unique, so there are remarkably uh, few people who have it, are functionally unique, which is, uh, uh, I would say, other people have may have it, but do not use it. So considering the scope, you may be unique in the world or maybe locally. You might have a superpower within your own family. And, uh, you know, I don't know how many of you actually um, have uh, know the story of Ram, but uh, okay, before I go there, so let's say if we had to say who has the power to make the strongest warrior in the world surrender, um, that would be uh, his mom, right? We can say that she has that superpower. So that's one way of looking at it. And uh, based on that, uh, we all, I, I think we all have superpowers, some sort of superpowers in some situation or other uh, that may come up. And uh, so, even if uh, you have literal superpowers, you may grant someone power over you, which gives them a superpower. So that's that's from the life's perspective. But let me translate that into you, the classic tester uh, superpowers for you. Some people are socially gifted. So add her to any team and everyone wants to work together instead of fighting. Some people are super analysts. Give them anything to study and they'll break it down and make six models from it. Some people are amazing at getting things finished. So super finishes, they just get it done and delivered. Some people are warriors defending the team from people who put unfair pressure on them. Some people are super empathic. They feel what the other users want. Some people are super talkers. They can explain just anything and uh, help people understand it. And experiences give you the power of memory and being very experienced can make you uh, be able to predict uh, the outcome of things that no one else sees coming. So that's also a superpower. So while uh, we are talking about superpowers, I would not want you to look at it as just uh, 
one superpower. I mean, think of it like a combination of, uh, uh, you know, if you, I, I don't know how many of you know, combination locks. They are used for safes and lockers. And while if you look at one layer of it or one level of it, it's just a lock, just another lock. What makes it stronger is the combination of different locks that open at different layer and it kind of reinforces, builds itself on one, uh, each one of them on, one to on top of each other. That kind of strength comes in because they're reinforcing their uh, strengths from each level of lock. So, but a quick warning here. Um, Uh, sometimes, um, uh, I don't know if you've heard of case of 10X engineer in our uh, VC circles, the virtual capital uh, uh, circles, uh, sorry, not <laughs> virtual capital, venture capitalist uh, circle, uh, people uh, and startup circle, people talk about 10X engineer, an engineer who does so much work that uh, it's almost equivalent to 10 engineers, that one person is equal to 10 persons work. And he's so good at it, so, so good at it. But uh, uh, maybe that person is not culturally a fit. Maybe that person is not a team player. They believe in being a single man army. Now, there are situations where it may work, but not in all situations. Organizations uh, need team player. So that's one way to look at it, that while you may have a superpower, it might uh, not be sufficient uh, for you to progress. Uh, consider for example i talk about diversity a lot and uh, how important it is for organizations now let's say that uh, someone who focuses on their superpowers might be insufficiently diverse within themselves so again that's uh, going to someday fail them uh, and uh, here i put a picture of uh, sustainability like i'm a sustainability enthusiast as i mentioned so i'm putting a picture of chimneys who are blasting away so much of uh, emissions into the air. And the fact is they are running at their full power. They're doing so much, they're building profits, but at the same time, they're making a long-term, uh, they're building a long-term de deficit with the climate, uh, which means that you may have a strong superpower which you are working on and it's giving you a immediate profit right now. But if you have to have a, a long-term career, then, uh, I think it's more important to make sure that you uh, develop sustainably. If you, it's not sustainable, it's not development because then you are headed towards failure, even if you don't see it. So make sure that uh, your superpowers are such which uh, reinforce each other. And to uh, put that in perspective, sometimes what happens is if I were to also say to you that, okay, what is your superpower? and uh, if you are able to identify it, and if you are able to build on it, you will be like, okay, I don't know. I, I'm good at this, maybe at that, and maybe at that also, but I just don't know how to put them all together and become somebody who's really exceptional. Uh, I would say find a mirror. When I say find a mirror, what it means is find somebody who has similar powers as you, and is uh, uh, you, can, uh, you can see uh, them and relate to them and see uh, that, okay, they... Uh, maybe some person who's getting crowded by people or who is always supported by people or who's, uh, the moment the person walks into the room, people always want to talk to them or want to uh, take their help in solving the problems. You know what kind of person that is. And if you see the same traits in yourself, then you know that this is your superpower also. You need to build on it. So it's always, it's sometimes easier to identify others' superpowers than your own, than your own and then kind of map yours to them. Uh, that's one approach. And there is, if this also doesn't work, if you're not able to get it, how to do it, and if you're, you see people with some similar traits, but you're still not sure, then I would definitely recommend you find a mentor. Uh, quickly, uh, coaching is um, different. It's more about performance driven uh, and designed to improve the professionals on the job performance. But mentoring is more about uh, development driven, looking not just at the professional's current job function, but beyond uh, that and taking a more holistic approach to career development. So having said that, um, I would highly recommend you to find a mentor or find or look around and see people. And that's why uh, you need to network and meet more people and talk to more people, not just in your organization, not just in your friend circle, but also beyond. 
and see the traits that people carry and see if you carry any of those traits. And if you see them as their superpowers, then maybe you also have those superpowers and you need to leverage them, put them together. And again, at the end, find a mentor if that doesn't work. And uh, if you need a mentor for career growth, professional growth building, I can help you. I may not be knowing all skills in depth, but I'm sure I know a lot of people who can help. So if you have questions, I'm going to stop screen sharing and come back to you. This was an amazing session. Um, I can see a lot of words going up, so I'm sure everybody enjoyed as well. Um, we're actually running out of time, but since we started your session a little late, I will uh, let one question uh, be taken up right now. Um, one question, the popular question here is, um, who is a software quality evangelist? Software quality evangelist. Okay. So uh, software quality is understood, but an evangelist is somebody who is... Uh, uh, you know, kind of a trailblazer, kind of somebody who's who does it first and who does or uh, I wouldn't even say does it first, but does it so well. Uh, uh, something to the tune of, uh, um, I would say, innovative at the same time, uh, doing some new work and then making it popular. So it's like product building and marketing of it both put together about software quality. So you bring up new ways of working, you bring up uh, more innovative ways of working, you bring out more depth into that subject. So since we are talking about software quality, a uh, software quality person, uh, uh, like you may say, uh, I think I was hearing about Jim yesterday. Uh, Jim is certainly a software uh, quality evangelist, finding out new ways of working on it, bringing out in depth into the subject and then also making it popular with the people, helping them grow with it. So an evangelist is somebody who does this I and mean, builds out stuff and then helps them, uh, helps the uh, community grow with it, uh, if that makes sense. And uh, I can certainly list out the tasks for you if you want. Thank you and enjoy the rest of the evening. Thank you so much, everyone.